spend some time in thy holy sanctuary. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and for your providence which you are continuing to bestow upon each one of us. As we look into thy living word, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, the Rock and the Redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, first of all, I would like to thank God for this wonderful opportunity which God has given us this morning to be with you, to worship God in unison and also to look into the word of God, to reflect upon the word and also to be nurtured by God's word. At the same time, I take this opportunity to thank uh, Reverend Dr. C.H. Vasanthrao Aigaru for giving this wonderful opportunity to be with you this morning. It's a great joy and uh, wonderful experience sharing our pulpit and also taking part in uh, worship services at various levels. And I am also privileged to serve this uh, Telugu congregation of Christ Church, Lalaguda. And uh, we look forward for your prayers, your support and uh, cordial relationship so that God may do wonders uh, in our personal lives and also in the life of the church uh, as a whole. The theme, wonderful theme which has been given this morning for us to reflect upon says ordained ministry transformed to transform. Ordained ministry transformed to transform. Once it happened, a young couple married with love and affection. Her husband gives a beautiful piece of a gift to his beloved wife. It's full of uh, colorful packing. And uh, morning he leaves to the work. And when he comes back in the evening, he expects his wife to share her experience uh, of uh, the wonderful gift which he had given. And surprisingly, when husband returns home, the wife she keeps the gift safely in the shelf. And the husband asks wife, dear my wife, this is one of my best gifts which I have given to you. What you have done with that? And she replies, it's very safe, dear husband, in the shelf. Then he asks to get the gift. And he, and he helps his wife to open that gift turn around it and look at what is written at the back of the gift and it says keep this piece of art the whole day outside the house and get it back into the house in the night so that it may glow wonderfully dear friends many times knowingly or unknowingly we skip the message or the instructions or the orders we can say, given to us, to the community, which are very much valid, which are very much important to sustain our physical life as well as the spiritual life. Well, uh, to preach in the presence of Old Testament scholars like Dr. Vasant Rao, it's a tough job for us because we need to take some of the words from the Old Testament and he's a scholar here sitting with us. But let me take the word from Old Testament, the ordination or ordain. I hope it is called hakak. And the meaning gives a wonderful, it is a multifaceted word, gives different meanings. And especially I love this word because it speaks a lot about the art or you know carving or bringing it into a, a beautiful shape in Isaiah chapter 10 verse 1 we see it means to decree to ordain in Proverbs we see it as to determine to appoint to describe in book of Job, Job we see to engrave and there are various words which are used 
uh, in the Holy Bible, especially in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. And we understand in the Old Testament, people have been appointed like Aaron and other leaders as uh, to lead the nation, to lead the tribes. You know, They are called by God, Yahweh, and have been appointed, ordained specifically to uh, convey God's message at the same time to reveal God's will to the people of God. And in the process, we understand that God has chosen various people from various uh, situations and circum circumstances to fulfill his perfect will. And as we look into this living word, dear friend, this morning, let us reflect upon two important aspects, especially from the book of Ezekiel and also from Gospel according to St. John chapter 21. The two important aspects what we understand from these two biblical passages we have read this morning from chapter 33 in fact if you go to 37 it says something about the condition of the Israelites and their life you know God called Ezekiel similarly called Isaiah Jeremiah the people of God prophesied prophecies of God and God fulfilled those prophecies according to his perfect will in his own perfect time. And God assigned this Ezekiel as to work as a watchman to look into the affairs of his own people. And here, as you continue to read chapter 34, 35 and 37, when you come to chapter 37, he gives a figurative message, a figurative language is being used in chapter 37 saying church people of God the house of God is like bones dry bones and God speaks to Ezekiel why don't you go and convey my message to them because they are without flesh their life is without blood their life is without life at all they are literally like dry bones a wonderful passage and the explanation is also given from verse 11 it says what is the situation what is the condition of the living church the house of God the people of God and God assigns Ezekiel he appoints twice uses Ezekiel the word appointed and commanded I, I shall read verse 7 so I appoint prophesied as I had been commanded in verse 7 and in verse 10 he says I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet a vast multitude dear friends we believe in a God who created everything by his word and similarly, we understand from this passage, we believe in a God who gives life again and again. In the sight of God, in the sight of the people, in the sight of neighboring countries and people, the nation, the people of God, the house of God has been destroyed. The house of God has been kept as slaves. Now Ezekiel, he completed almost his five years of captivity. He settled his life with a family, wife and children. He thought that would be enough for his life to enjoy. But God's will is to lift him up from their captivity. Out of the 37 years of captivity, God lifts Ezekiel, speaks to him and speaks to his own people through Ezekiel. Transformed to transform the word ordained if, if we if we imply if we apply this word ordained to the life of Ezekiel God started to paint his life God started to you know do carving on his life God started to give something new face to his life his faith his belief God started to give a wonderful new image to his own personal life. Dear friends, this morning as we reflect upon this wonderful word of God, 
you know the ordained ministry when we hear this word ordained our mind triggers to specifically the ministry rendered by the ordained priest but the word of god says each one of us have been called have been formed have been sculptured have been painted and given a wonderful image of god to convey his message to his own people we are being transformed to convey the transformation life which god has given to us what a wonderful experience ezekiel had what a wonderful experience prophet isaiah had what a wonderful experience jeremiah had turning everything ups and down and god used ezekiel to turn everything ups and down to give life to the dry bones to give life to the dead to give life to those who lost everything and did not have any hope of life and through the word of god he continues to sustain and give and extend his wonderful life you know the ultimate reality the ultimate reason god the ultimate wish of god is to convert this slavery convert the house of god into a wonderful place of joy and happiness the words which are used in chapter 37 conveys god's intention was to create more beautiful than eden garden which he has created in the beginning of creation he wanted to create more than beautiful than the garden garden of eden and for which god appoints ezekiel he transformed his life to transform the lives of the people dear friends we are called we are appointed and we are ordained to convey the message of god but many a times dear friends our relationships are like dry bones our fellowships have become like dry bones our worships have become like dry bones our witnessing life in the community at large have become like dry bones and god wants to give life to this dry life what we have sometimes especially we are living in a society where you know there is a vast there, there is a greater impact of the society into the church earlier church used to influence the society but nowadays church is being influenced by the society because of various reasons especially when you come into come and uh, reflect upon the the whole institute of marriage the relationship the covenant which is made in the presence of god is being taken lightly and god would like to give life to that wonderful covenant which god has given to the whole humanity two people live together under under one shelter but yet they don't speak to each other for many many years there are many families you know christian community in the society in which we live the relationships have been broken and dried up like dry bones dear friends the message of god this morning is to reflect upon our relationships our worships our fellowships and our life as a whole so that the dry life can be given a new life coming to the gospel according to st john chapter 21 it's a wonderful passage known to us jesus speaking to peter and uh, the writer clearly writes very carefully and mentions words and uh, the conversation what ha- had between jesus and peter you know thrice jesus asks do you love me and peter immediately responds and at the end of the question the third question when he was asked he was so angry the word it is used he was hurt peter peter got hurt because jesus was asking again and again and peter mind went to that incident where jesus rebuked now peter was thinking in similar lines where jesus may rebuke him or reject him to follow him to experience his blessings and he was hurt but jesus never stopped questioning peter 
the whole process of conversation is is nothing but it is an interview jesus interviewing peter to assign him something important some important task to him so that his will may be fulfilled this is the whole process of ordination now we also have you know dice in a pastoral ministry we are called we are interviewed we are sent to remote villages to work for some time we are sent for theological education and we come back and serve as pastors and go for higher studies the whole process enables us to understand the will of god not only in the church but for the personal edification and personal personal pastoral formation if we do not have that pastoral formation we may fail in our pastoral ministry and jesus is doing the same thing he is applying the same method in the life of peter saying do you really love me the first word used agape but peter responds with filio the second time jesus asks agape do you love me peter says filio yes i love you and the third time jesus comes down with the word do you love me feel you and peter responds with the same word you know master i love you thrice he asked and the intention of asking thrice peter is nothing but to remind him that he denied jesus for thrice jesus wanted to stress upon that when you denied me when you rejected me when you did not did not accept me as your savior now when you want to follow me do you really love me jesus trying to help peter to introspect his faithful journey his personal transformation his his commitment to the call and ministry the word simon has a different meaning but it also means when jesus mentions simon peter son of john it means obedience it means also knowledge knowing god it also means to have grace of god in the life of peter jesus expected obedience jesus expected the knowledge the wisdom to understand and lead the sheep according to his will and also the grace of god if the shepherd do not have the qualities of obedience o- obedience unto the authorities he cannot manage the people who are under him if he doesn't have the knowledge and understanding he cannot lead the sheep into the right way at all if he is not having the grace of god he cannot be a successful and fruitful ordained servant of god at all but peter dear friends in john's gospel chapter 21 he did not reject at all he realized his commitment and call and he responded thrice and he he reaffirmed his faith in lord jesus christ saying that i am a sinful person I committed sin against you and I accept it and I promise that I would follow you faithfully to establish your church through me and through which Jesus entrusted his authority to Peter to establish the church of God dear friends three things happened in the life of Peter Jesus lays the responsibility of pastoral ministry into the hands of Peter and second thing he predicts that he is going to be killed for the sake of God and also he God imposes pastoral office into the hands of Peter to convey his message to the people of God dearly beloved in Christ as we contemplate upon this living wonderful word of god the jesus asking again and again do we really love god if you turn along with me to gospels according to saint john 
chapter 21 a wonderful connecting word it says when they had finished breakfast jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than these john uses this word saying son of simon son of john do you love me more than these in asking this question jesus intention is to make sure that peter doesn't compare with his own fellow brothers and who are following lord jesus christ the intention of asking jesus do you love me more than these means do you love me more than what you have in your professional life do you love me more than these what you possess in this world in this materialistic world do you love me more than these the qualities what you have in your personal life do you love me more than these things what you have in this world and jesus is asking do you really love me more than all these things what you have in this life and this morning with this simple question let us ask ourselves as we are called and ordained and shaped into a wonderful life in the image of god are we able to depend upon god are we able to listen the voice of god are we able to really accept the word of god and love god with our full heart and spirit and knowledge and our understanding are we really ready to sacrifice the things of this world to love god truly let me just conclude with a small illustration it goes like this in a beautiful garden the master comes every day and examines the garden and its greenery one fine morning as he enters into the garden the beautiful bamboo trees the tallest trees in the garden bows down to his master saying good morning and good morning as he leaves the garden again they bend down and say goodbye master goodbye one fine morning master comes and asks oh you are beautiful long tallest wonderful bamboo trees in this wonderful garden i want something from you and they say what dear master and he says i want to cut your leaves and the bamboo trees felt bad because they are going to lose their beauty but ultimately they have to accept the master's decree and they said yes master you can do it the master cuts the green leaves the second day master enters into the garden and says dear bamboos are you ready then they said for what you have already have taken away something from our from us what else do you want master then the master says i want to cut you from the bottom of the roots then the bamboos feel so hurt that they start to dislike their master and the master fulfills his duty and keeps the bamboos aside and after some days the master enters into the garden and speaks to these wonderful bamboos are you ready then they say what else master you have already cut and you have disconnected us from the roots what else do you want then he says i want to make you into two pieces then they said okay ultimately it is your will and wish and the master make these bamboos into two pieces the long ones he takes one edge into the green garden and the other edge to the dry piece of land which is there next to the green garden and let that water flow from the bamboo and reaches to the dry garden dry place so that it also may be transformed into a wonderful green place dear friends as followers of lord jesus christ 
He expects us to sacrifice something which is so nearest and dearest to us, which is so loving to us, which is so much close to us, which we, we may not be able to leave those things in our personal lives. But when we sacrifice those things, God may project His wonderful qualities in and through our personal lives. Shall we all bow heads and pray? Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning which you have given us. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful life which you have given us.